Praise the Lord, my viewer. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is my personal savior. We are back here once again. My name is Liz Kagwanja, and this is Liz Refuge TV, where we say, don't go down alone. All right. Um, today's topic is um, lost and found. Lost and found. My viewer, we are uh, looking forward to celebrate Christmas, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for that reason, it is good that we remind ourselves why Jesus came. All the way from heaven, he gave up his glory, he gave up his seat in heaven to come down and suffer, to come down, be born as a, a human being, to go through what we go through, to suffer what we suffer, to experience what we experience so that in the process he can be able to redeem us. Yes, Jesus came because we were lost. We were lost. If you are not lost, you cannot be found. And that is why our topic today is lost and found because we were lost. But now, we are found because Jesus came. And that is why we keep on celebrating his birth. All right. I want us to be read by the word of God uh, so that we can be able to capture from the Bible what exactly we mean when we talk about being lost and found. I want us to be read by the word of God from Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Verse 9 to 14. And it says, Then he told this story to some who boasted of their virtue and scorned everyone else. It is Jesus telling the story. And he was telling to some of these people who are very boastful, who are holier than thou, and they scorned every other person. Yeah? They considered every other person to be a sinner. So Jesus told this story. Uh, two men went to the temple to pray. One was a proud self righteous Pharisee, and the other, a cheating tax collector. The proud Pharisee prayed this prayer, thank you God, I am not a sinner like everyone else, especially like that tax collector over there. For I never cheat, I do not commit adultery. Uh, I go without food twice a week, and I give God a tenth of everything I earn. Verse 13. But the uh, corrupt tax collector stood at a distance and dared, and he dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed but beat upon his chest in sorrow, exclaiming, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home forgiven. For the proud shall be humbled, but the humble shall be honored. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, as we approach 
uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, it is good to remind ourselves that Jesus came because we were lost. Jesus came to deliver us from our sins. Jesus came to look for us, to find us, yeah? And to hold our hands and lead us back home because we were lost and we were far away from home. Yes, because we disobeyed. Our forefathers, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed the command of God. And because of that, they were removed from the Garden of Eden. And from there, we had to be redeemed. Jesus did not come for the righteous like the Pharisee. Yeah? We can see the, the comparison of two people here. Yeah? The Pharisee who goes to pray and he posts, Lord, I thank you because I'm righteous. Lord, I thank you because I'm not like that um, tax collector. Lord, I thank you because I don't commit adultery. I thank you because I don't cheat. Oh my God, what we are seeing here, my viewer, is self-justification. Self-justification from the Pharisee, the holier than thou. We can see the holier than thou uh, uh, attitude. And we are saying this, unless you are lost and you acknowledge that you are lost, you cannot be found. You cannot be found. And remember our topic today is lost and found. So we are saying this, that Jesus did not come for the righteous. You know, he came for the lost. He came for the sinful. And unless we admit that we are sinful, that we are lost, that we need God in our lives, if we go posting that we are righteous, that we are good people, we justify ourselves, then that means that we don't need God, we don't need anyone to come and deliver us we don't need the help of anyone, all right? So, this prayer, my dear, the prayer of the Pharisee is nothing like the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. If we look at this prayer that the Pharisee was praying, thanking God because of his holiness, you know, justifying himself before God, it, it, this prayer is not even close to the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. The prayer that Jesus taught opens with God. All right, my dear? That prayer opens with God. Okay, our Father in heaven. All right? And then it talks about the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Yeah? That prayer recognizes God first. And the kingdom of God. And then it talks about the will of God. That the will of God should be done. So it teaches us that we have to submit to the will of God, as we said last week. We have to submit, we have to humble ourselves and submit to scrutiny of God and the will of God to be done in our lives. And then, after the will of God, now this is when it moves to the need of man for daily bread. That is where now, you ask God to give you the daily bread. This shows that we depend on God. We reference God in our lives. Yes, 
And then the prayer continues and talks about forgiveness and deliverance, my dear. We need to be forgiven our sins. No one is holy. In fact, every human being is born with the faults. Yeah, because of that sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden. So, forgiveness is important and deliverance is important. And that is why Jesus came. Remember we are saying that in a few days to come we shall be celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And we cannot celebrate that birth unless, you know, in a meaningful way, unless we recognize why he came in the first place. All right? We recognize and we celebrate his birth because of the way he died for us on the cross. Yes, his birth is celebrated in reference to his death also because he died for us on the cross. The Pharisees' prayer has no need of anyone or anything because he is already in himself perfect. Yeah. And not like the tax corrector. So we can see that the Pharisee has already justified himself. All right? So we are seeing the contrast of one person who justifies himself and another person who seeks the mercy of God to be justified by the living God and by the grace of God. We are seeing one proud person, very proud, perfect, with self-justification, and we are also seeing another person who is humbled, who is very humble, who is in sorrows because of his sins. And my dear, you, you will tell me who will be forgiven. Who will be forgiven? One has nothing to be forgiven. He has already justified himself. And we are going to see the end of these people who justify themselves. There is no need of living a holier than thou life, condemning other people, judging other people. Me, I don't smoke, so I'm holy. Me, I don't drink, so I'm holy. Me, I don't commit adultery like so and so, so I'm holy. Me, I don't cheat. My God, I want to tell you this. In another place, Jesus has spoken to these Pharisees. And he has said, he has told them, you, you justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your heart. In fact, he refers those hearts as open graves. You know, open graves you can imagine, full of caterpillars and other things inside, dirty things, rotten things, you know. You can imagine, full of smell. You can imagine. He describes their hearts. You know, these people who justify themselves as open graves. The tax collectors, my viewer, are associated with the sinners throughout the Bible. The tax collector in this parable brings out a picture of shame. And his prayer is of few words. Yes. He portrays, it portrays a person who is ashamed, who is ashamed of the sins he has committed. The prayers, the, the words are very few in his prayers. He's ashamed, he's humbled. Yeah. He's seeking for the mercy of God. All right? So he prays, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. My dear, it is my prayer that today, by the end 
of this session, you will be in a position to be humbled before God and pray for mercy, like this tax corrector who prays, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, a sinner. Yeah, we were lost. But now we are found through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Through the coming of Jesus Christ, we are found. This tax corrector, just like Simon Peter, the woman who anoints Jesus' feet, is about to be saved by the grace. Yes, we have to be humbled. We have to humble ourselves before God so that we can be saved by the grace. We are saved by the grace. I want to say that we are saved by the grace. No one is righteous. No one is an angel. No one is perfect. But we are saved. Salvation is through the grace of God. Never be challenged by somebody who boasts with self-justification, with the holier-than-thou attitude. These are people who are condemned. Yeah. The tax collector goes home justified. Yes. The tax corrector goes home. You know, what we mean by being justified is that we have no holiness of our own, my dear. We have no holiness of our own. But we are justified. We are clothed with God's holiness. We are made holy by God. By God through grace. All right? We see the contrast between the Pharisee and the tax collector, and we see it because those who are like the Pharisee, they trust in themselves. They trust in their own righteousness. Okay? And those, we also see the contrast of this Pharisee now and the tax collector. One man who trusts in his, own, in his own holiness, yeah, and justification. And one person who trusts in God for justification, yeah. The tax collector trusts in God to justify him, but the Pharisee is already justified, okay. Jesus tells the Pharisee, that they justify themselves in the sight of others, but God knows their hearts. All right? And we see that there is a contrast between those who justify themselves and those who are justified by God. So the parable concludes that the last line that we read in that parable, it says, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled and all who humble themselves will be exalted okay my dear i want to say this that if you ask prisoners if you ever happened to go to prison and you ask prisoners why they were brought in in prison what kind of answers would you get some will tell you, I don't deserve to be here. Yeah. Some will say, this is not my place. I don't deserve to be here. I even don't know how I came here. I never thought I could be in prison. All right? Self-justification. Others would say, I was framed. I was framed. I was nowhere near that place. I was framed. I was not even there. I never did it, I was framed. Others will say I was falsely accused. I was falsely accused. Others will say I was unfairly, I was given an unfair trial. All right? Very few accused.
accused, very few accused and jailed <laughs> uh, inmates would confess that they did anything. Very few inmates would admit they were guilty. All right? And I think that is the same case. That is the same case that applies to every one of us because we, we don't think we are accused. We don't think that we stand to be tried. We don't think so. We don't think we have sinned. So these people, they live in self-denial. They live in self-denial. And this parable teaches us that it is good to admit, it is good to admit our sins. It is good to admit that we were lost, that we were lost. It is good to accept that we need God in our lives, that we need Jesus to rescue us from our sin. It is for each one of us that Jesus came. Jesus did not come for the righteous. Jesus came for the lost. And in the, through this, we were all lost. All right? As long as the sinner claims innocence and he refuses to acknowledge his transgressions before the Lord, he does not receive the blessings of redemption. All right? No one can receive the blessings of redemption. If you do not believe that you are lost, and if you do not believe that Jesus came for you so that he can redeem you, so that he can deliver you, so that he can hold your hand, uplift you, and lead you home. If you do not believe in that, then you cannot receive the blessings of redemption. But when a sinner pleads guilty, and he cries out, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. When a sinner pleads guilty, my dear friend, and he cries out to God, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. God's pardon is available to everyone, but it is experienced only by those who admit guilt and trust Christ. So, my dear friend, I want, to, I want this to be a period of searching. As we celebrate Christmas this year, I want this to be a period of soul searching soul searching, where you search yourself, where you admit that you are guilty, where you admit that it is for you that Jesus came. So that at least as we complete this year, you will be in a position to cry to God, Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, deliver me. This should be your prayer. That even as we celebrate Christmas this year, you will be transformed from the kingdom of, of darkness to the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To be found, a person must fast recognize that he is lost. <laughs> My dear, we cannot be talking about lost and found if we are not lost. We cannot be found if we are not lost. So we are saying, to be found, a person must be, must first recognize that he is lost. All right? Yes. So we are saying, I want to give you an example. Last Sunday, Last Sunday, 
I was actually celebrating, celebrating a friend of mine whom we have been lost from each other for 40 years. 40 years. So we were able to say we were lost, but we were found. Last Sunday, last Sunday, yeah. We were celebrating my friend whom we got lost from each other 40 years. For 40 years, I saw her last Sunday. Sunday. And we had a great reunion. Those who watched my status and those who watched my story, you must have seen that reunion. It was great. It was great. And it is my prayer that if an angry person, if angry people can have such a great reunion, what about your reunion with your maker? What about your reunion with your Redeemer? Yeah, you are Mika. You never, I keep on saying you never created yourself. You never. It is, you are the work of God. You are the work of the living God. The work of the living God. God created you. Yes, he worked. Yeah. To make you. And then, you got lost. Isn't it, my dear? You got lost. But now, we are talking about your reunion with your maker. We are talking about your reunion with your maker through the coming of Jesus Christ. His only begotten son. His only begotten son. And my dear, we are not being judgmental here and we are not condemning anyone. We are all in it, all of us. We are condemning this self-justification thing of people justifying themselves. We all need God. We all need God's deliverance. We all need God's justification. All right? Guilty sinners must either be pardoned or punished. My dear, you cannot have your cake and eat it. You will either be a sinner who, is be, uh, who has been forgiven, or you will be a sinner who is liable for punishment. Because if you do not accept the Lord, if you do not accept the deliverance of God, and to be delivered by the grace of God, to be justified by the grace of God, then you will be liable for punishment. So we are saying guilty sinners must either be pardoned or punished. The choice is yours, my dear. The choice is yours. If you accept that you are guilty, and if you accept that you need the Lord Jesus Christ for justification, if you accept the deliverance of God, then you will have the joy of the Lord to know that you are lost and you are found. You have been found. All right? The good news is that we don't have to be punished. The fact is that we, like the tax collectors and everyone else around us, are all sinners. But, but, my dear, in spite of that fact that we are all sinners, we are all beloved children of our gracious Father. Our Father is gracious. He loves us. And that is why He sent Jesus Christ to redeem us, to deliver us, to uplift us, and lead us home, lead us back home where we belong. We are invited to experience the freedom that comes with the casting all our burdens and care. The cares of this world to Christ. All right? So we have been invited. Are you going to accept that invitation, my dear? Are you going to accept that invitation from the Lord? From the Lord. Let us draw ourselves into the arms of God who has already found us through Christ. Are you going to draw yourself 
into the arms of God today. Yeah? Christ came to die for us, for our redemption. He came to lift us and lead us home. Yes. And as we look forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, let us be ready to have our lives renewed. Yes, if you accept. If you accept that you are guilty, and if you accept to have the mercy of God, to be justified through the mercies and the grace of God, then you are going to have your life renewed. Let us surrender our evil doing and give Christ our lives to lead us home. Let us prepare to sing the song of the amazing grace. Amazing grace of God that saved us. Yes, my dear. If you accept that you are lost, you will be found. You will be found through Jesus Christ because Jesus came to look for those who are lost. Let us accept that we were lost, but now we are found. That is the song that we shall be singing at the end of every day. Yes, when you allow Christ to come and change, transform your life from this day, you will be singing the amazing grace, about the amazing grace. And you will be singing this new song that I was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. My viewer, prepare your heart. Continue to prepare your heart because we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Allow Christ to come in your life. Allow Christ to come and transform your life so that you can be able to see, as I've said, about the amazing grace. You can be able to see that I was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have come to the end of this session, but don't go away. Liz Refuge continues. I'm coming back with friends. So don't go away. That's where Liz Refuge TV comes on board. A television network that offers social life teachings and moral upholds, music that promotes faith and inspires souls, and healing from professional counselors. Join us every Tuesday from 9 a.m. for inspiration at Liz Refuge TV on Facebook and Liz Refuge TV on YouTube. Liz Refuge TV, a media with a difference. Sometimes you feel lonely and rejected. Sometimes you need a motivation to keep you going. Sometimes you need a shoulder to lean on. Sometimes a word of God can heal it all. That's where Liz Refuge TV comes on board. A television network that... Are you tired of searching for affordable rooms for your smart business? Then worry no more. Strong Tower Plaza Pipeline is here for you. Located along Kiambogo Elementaita Road opposite oil tanks, few meters away from Jehovah Shama Prayer Center is an ideal business premise that offers affordable business offices. Precious halls for events such as birthday parties, wedding events, churches, supermarkets, and colleges. For business starters, we have small shops and renting out single rooms where water and electricity is not a problem. We have a 24-hour security system for your business without forgetting an ample parking space for your vehicle. You can reach us on 0701-879-585 or 0733-791-855. 866 or 0722 
0291-261-165. Potential wholesalers and retail customers are waiting for you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. For the early bird catches the worm. Strong Tower Plaza Pipeline. Your business is our priority.